Hello everybody and welcome back to PSVR 2 News, the show where we go over what just happened in the last week or so of PlayStation VR 2. Now it's been quiet for a little while so we haven't had too many installments of this, but now we're back on our feet and ready to go with a lot of news from not only the game showcase, but a couple of other sources as well. Before we get into it though, only 25% you're actually subbed to the channel, so please feel free to do so. We just hit 19,000 subscribers and that is a massive number, so thank you so much. We're on to 20 next for the next big goal. And thank you to our patrons and members who are all on screen right now. Of course, we did have the game showcase, including the Shadow Drop of Hidden Memories, the Trombone Champ DLC and Aces of Thunder campaign reveal trailer, along with a longer look at Reach and a couple of other games too. I overall liked the showcase very much. As somebody who plays on PC VR and PS5, I was satisfied, but for PS5 only, I can see how a little bit was undercooked for us PSVR 2 fans. A lot of stuff was announced coming to other platforms that we'll probably get later though, like the new Green Hell style game tracked by the same studio, and also Exoshock, which looked awesome. That fast-paced co-op shooter is planned to come to PSVR 2 later. So post-launch, they are looking into our platform, which is good to see. Overall though, very happy with how the showcase turned out and I look forward to the next one in November. The Gamescom sale also kicked off for PSN including a load of flat screen games but also a couple of VR games. I listed them all in yesterday's video and the link will be in the description to that one if you want to go and have a look at what is on sale. A lot of great games there including AAA and indie alike. One particular one we don't see go on sale too often is Legendary Tales, and I know a lot of you say that Legendary Tales' base price is a little too high for you, so it's the perfect time to go and check that out if you want to. Now the next bit of news still does pertain to the showcase a bit, uh, but I wanted to make a separate section for it because we don't really know what we're looking at at the time. But AJ from PSVR Underground has actually come out and clarified this. The footage we saw of Flat Out 4 VR in the Flat to VR Spark section, we thought was a different game. We thought that was a different Flat to VR port of Flat Out 4 instead of Flat Out VR because originally Flat Out VR was meant to be an amalgamation of tons of different Flat Out games. But it seems now it is just focusing on Flat Out 4 and the name has been changed. So that means that the short gameplay bits that we saw of Flat Out VR in the cockpits of each of the car is our first look at actual gameplay. Through the Flat to VR Spark initiative as well, more Flat Out games may come to VR if this one does well. So first and foremost, we're getting Flat Out 4 with 27 cars, 20 tracks, and all of the modes such as Stunt, Arena, Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, Survivor, and Assault. This is gonna be absolutely incredible. Looking at these little gameplay snippets, something like Burnout, Flat Out, and Wreckfest is just gonna be so much fun in VR. I cannot wait to be crashing into all of you guys on the racetrack when it launches. We also got the launch of the Tokyo map for Walkabout Mini Golf. Now I haven't jumped into this one yet. I'm really, really excited to do so. I believe it's based in Shinjuku, which I have been to for like half a day, very shortly, but hopefully there'll be a couple of things that I recognize there. And I cannot wait to go and take a look at this. I haven't seen anything about it. I'm gonna download the trailer or a couple of screenshots and put it in the uh, in the news section here without really looking at them because I don't know what this looks like and I can't wait to jump in and look at it. So that might be tomorrow's video. We'll be looking at that. The Walkabout team always do a fantastic job of their Walkabout mini golf maps. And this is a location that is quite special to me. So I cannot wait to dive in. Unfortunately, we got a price increase for B Haptics. Now this, Kind of sucks because I love my Behaptic suit. I think it is fantastic, especially for sim racing is the main thing that I use it for. And even in that mode, it's just audio to haptic, so it's not native support, but it still works great. It makes me feel the rumble of the engine. Each upshift and downshift and every time I ride over a curb, it's truly immersive. But unfortunately, they have some bad news, and that is that Behaptics are raising their prices. Now, this might not be the biggest blow to some PSVR 2 players because, again, not that many games actually have native support. But unfortunately, they're raising their prices by about $20 to $30 for most of them, which isn't too much for a raise than I expected. But it's still, again, it's just a consequence of the global market, I think. And that is the effect that it's had on their product. If you're living in the US, though, the price for a tax suit will be going up even more because of the tariff situation, unfortunately. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. Now, I said a little while ago that eye tracking will probably not be unlocked in an accessible way on PC for PSVR 2 ever. That's not the case though, as eye tracking and adaptive triggers can now be used on PC, thanks to an open source mod of the Sony SteamVR driver. So this isn't officially supported, but a new team of software devs have basically put together a package to get all this working on the headset. So for example, if you use VR chat and want eye tracking there, this is now a genuine option. They've also added 10-bit color depth support, which is appreciated. Unfortunately, HDR I don't think is supported on SteamVR at all, which is very, very, 
strange. I didn't even realize that, but somebody in the comments below the article that was announcing this did actually point that out. That's really strange. Don't know why SteamVR doesn't support that, but it's good that 10-bit color depth is there, adding over a billion colors to your output, basically. 10-bit color depth doesn't work on newer AMD cards though, which is a classic AMD. And that comes from somebody who uses AMD cards and loves AMD cards. I'm just not surprised. The tracking of the Sense controllers is also improved further than the original driver. Apparently the prediction models for them is just better. So that's an unexpected benefit from this. Awesome. Now the three devs who have done this are called What the Hopper, High Blocker and Supremium. Each of them worked on a different area of this and you can download it from GitHub, which I'll link in the description below. This is only for SteamVR though, not OpenXR unfortunately, but this now makes PSVR 2 the cheapest eye tracked headset for PC VR ever made. So if you can get it on a sale especially, we're looking at $350 for an eye tracked bit of kit. That is crazy. Now foveated rendering won't work. This is just eye tracking for games like VR chat. So you can actually show where your eyes are looking. Foveated rendering is a completely different deal that will need to be kind of modded in itself or done by developers. But it's good to see eye tracking actually put in here for a use that a lot of people will probably buy the PSVR 2 for. Anyway, that'll be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the news about flat out, the news about extra shock and the news about eye tracking working on PC. Crazy times we live in. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next one.